Hi everyone. So uh, we're coming to the end of chapter two and there's a few more um, details to, uh, to work through. And um, so a couple of them are just to look at, uh, look a little bit more closely at some of the things we've already talked about. And the first of those is uh, to look a little bit more closely at what happens when you uh, negate uh, statements that involve quantifiers. This is something which can sometimes get a little confusing, so I'm going to just look at a few examples. So here's a statement. Uh, it's really an open sentence. X and Y are both even. Um, it's an open sentence because it involves variables. Uh, you could make it a statement by saying, um, by saying what X and Y are. Um, but let's suppose that you wanted to, let's suppose that this sentence was, was buried in the middle of a longer paragraph. You know, it says, so, so X comes from some process, Y comes from some process, we won't worry about it. And then somebody, then this, the, the sentence is X and Y are both even. What is the um, negation of that? So just to uh, kind of tie a few ideas together, um, this is an and statement. And in English, it says X and Y are both even. You can say that. It's the and both. But really, this is two separate statements. It's a statement about X. X is even. So we could call that P of X. And it's a statement about Y. Y is even, which we could call Q of Y. It should really be Y. And the statement that we've written here is P of X and Q of Y which in symbols can be written with the wedge, because remember the wedge is like the intersection symbol. It reminds us that it's and, both things have to be true. So what happens when you negate, when you say not P of X and Q of Y, or in symbols, Well, the negation, uh, you might remember De Morgan's law. De Morgan's law says that if you negate an and, you get the or of the negations. So this is logically equivalent to not P of X or not Q of Y. If, uh, if that confuses you or you don't remember why, then it might be easy to look at a quick truth table. If you have P, Q, and P and Q, then it's true, true, true. And remember, the and is true only if both of them are true. So in the other four, other three cases, it's false. And if you do not P and Q, then you get false, true, true, true. And therefore, this is false. It's true unless they're both true, in which case it's false, the negation that is. And at the same time, if you were to look at not P and not Q, you would have false, false, true, true, false, true, false, true. And then if you were to do not P or not Q, you would have false, true, true, true. And if you compare these two columns, you see that they're the same. And that's just a little bit of a reminder that um, if you take the not of an and, you get an or of the nots. Or you could think about this just in terms of everyday English. If I tell you that it's false that X and Y are both even, then even in common English, that means it must be the case that either X isn't even or Y isn't even. So just to finish this line, uh, here I've worked it out in symbols or using De Morgan's laws, but now we should go back to English. And not P is the statement X is not even or Y is not even. So uh, in English, you could say X is not even or Y is not even. And in English, you can also say 
x or y is not even. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, here, the statement that we're, we're interested in, this is the original statement, the square of every real number is non-negative. And we can put that into symbols by recognizing that every real number means we're making a statement, a, un a universal quantifier. We're saying for all x in R. So every real number translates into for all x in the reals. Its square is non-negative, translates into x squared is bigger than or equal to zero. So this is the symbolic way of writing the sentence that we have to the left. So what is the negation? Let's call this one one and this one two. What is the negation of number one? Well, you could do this in several different ways. If you look at the symbols, then remember that to show for this to, to negate this, it you want a statement. It has to be you want to know when this when this original statement is true, the, the negation is supposed to be false and vice versa. So the square of every real number is non negative. The negation of that is that not that the square of every real number is not non-negative, but just that there's one real number which is not non which is non whose square is not non-negative. So the negation of this is, and, and if you like the symbols, it, the the negation converts the universal quantifier for all into the existential quantifier there exists, and it negates the statement. But in English, this says there is an x in R so that x squared is less than 0. Now, as it happens, that's false. But nevertheless, that's the negation of the sentence that we began with. If you think back to the previous example where we took the negative of an and, uh, remember that a for all is like an and over all x's in R. So it's like saying, Whatever real number x you plug in, you make the statement x squared is bigger than or equal to zero, and you and all of these together. When you take the negation of that, you're going to negate all of those sentences. So you're going to get x squared is less than zero together for all the, you know, with all the real numbers. But now instead of connecting them by and, you're going to connect them by or. And so um, when you negate the and, you get an or. So now instead of all of the sentences having to be true, you just need to find one. And that's why it becomes there exists. And if we look at number two, here we have a there exists statement. There is an integer y so that y squared equals 20. Again, that's a false statement, but it's still a statement. In symbols, that's the statement there exists y such that y squared equals 20. And its negation is now, we're going to be looking at for all, oh, that should be a 20, for all y, y squared is not equal to 20. Again, we converted the there exists into a for all, and we took the negation of y squared equals 20 to become y squared is not equal to 20. And this, this statement here is actually true. Right, because the there the square root of twenty as a real number is not an integer, so this statement here is false and its negation is true. Whereas here this statement was true, so its negation is false. Now, if we want to put that back into English, we have to say this says for all y in z, y squared is not equal to 20. Or you could say there is no uh, 
Well, it's no integer y, so that y squared equals 20, which of course is just the straight out negation of the original statement, or the square of any integer y is never 20. That would be maybe another way of saying this. 